Newtown parents score a win in growing fight against hoaxers. Uh, hoaxers. This, yes. Oh, the, oh, this is uh, Alex Jones. Uh, this is actually not about the Alex Jones thing. Oh, this uh, is the this broader is, hoaxer community. This is a fa- this guy right here. Another uh, hoaxer, basically. This okay. guy right here is the uh, father of uh, a Sandy Hook uh, Elementary School massacre uh, victim who has recently won a uh, defamation lawsuit against the authors of a book that claimed the shooting never happened. Mm-hmm. The latest victory for victims' relatives who have been taking a more aggressive stance against conspiracy theories. The book, Nobody Died at Sandy Hook, has also been pulled from shelves to settle claims against its publisher, filed by Lenny Posner, uh, whose six-year-old son Noah was killed in the shooting. Uh, my face-to-face interactions with Mr. Posner have uh, led me to believe that Mr. Posner is telling the truth about the death of his son. <laughs> wow, what a gracious. Dave Gahari, the principal off, uh, officer at, at publisher Moon Rock Books. Didn't have a problem when you're day. making money off of it, asshole, did you? I my heartfelt and sincere apology to the Posner family. Now, this- oh, you, oh, so you lose a lawsuit and suddenly you just you found the fucking truth. How convenient. This guy right here, uh, we, we probably I think probably we watched videos at the time of uh, people saying, like, I think I oh, remember him. He's smiling or he... Doesn't yeah. seem oh, that's like that his guy? kid died. Is that the guy that I believe so? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There used to be all I've kinds of videos where then. it's like, oh, he's, oh, he's smiling. He looks, oh, he's so happy. He looks too happy to have just lost a kid. So Price is it's actor. obviously oh, fake. Oh my god, these fucking people. Which is um, exactly what people do, by the way, when they're in, they have a tragedy and they're in public in right. order to try and keep themselves together. They put on a, they plaster on a smile and try and be amicable with people. Uh, it's a pretty common defense mechanism. Uh, it's really it's, sick. It's a hundred percent common. Yeah. Yeah, it's not uncommon at all. Um, a Wisconsin judge issued a summary judgment on Monday against the authors James Fetzer and Mike uh, Palasek, a-, a ruling that was separate from the settlement between Posner and the book's publisher. A trial to decide damage has been set for October. Posner has been pushing back for years against hoaxers who have harassed him, subjected him to death threats, and claimed that he was an actor and his son never existed. He has spent years getting Facebook and others to remove conspiracy videos and set up a website to debunk conspiracy theories. Lately, the fight has been joined by others uh, who lost relatives in the December 14th, 2012 school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. After quietly enduring uh, harassment and ridiculous assertions for years, some have changed their approach, deciding the only way to stop it is to confront it. Their efforts have turned the tables on the hoaxers, including Alex Jones, host of the conspiracy-driven InfoWars website. Can you imagine not only having your child murdered, but then for years enduring people bringing it up continuously and saying that you're lying about it, that the the child didn't exist, that you're an actor? I mean, good for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, for years we had fucking people like Alex Jones, other fucking hucksters and scammers out there denigrating the loss these people have had, which is not not always super public, but as a kind of talking point for people. And then to have some fucking goddamn hucksters come up and sell supplements on the bodies of these dead kids is even more disgusting. So good for them winning this these lawsuits because they fucking definitely deserve because these yeah, people I are, don't disagree. are 100% full of <laughs> shit know, and they know it. It's interesting. This uh, this Flash Friday has been full of First Amendment implications. Right. Um, um, and this one definitely and this, has one, too. I, well, I, for I, me, I'm kind of concerned. I mean, I, I, I understand the defamation thing. Yes. Uh, and defamation should exist and all that uh, as a exception, but... Um, I'm worried about. I think someone has a right to fucking write a book that said nobody died at Sandy Hook. Even yeah, if it I, doesn't. Even if that's total bullshit, I feel right. like they still fundamentally, by my interpretation of the First Amendment, have the right to do that. I agree well, with you a hundred percent. It does irk me that a book was pulled from the shelves, but they, well, they did. This, it they did it voluntarily. They said the publisher right. of the book said that he's convinced that the book is no longer accurate. Well, so. Then that that's fine. Then it wasn't pulled to censor it, but the fact that that book was written and is uh, was available and is now no longer it available was pulled is certainly amidst political pressure. For, it's and certainly a censor. It's, it's an act of censorship. Whether you you know whether you can sure. justify it or not, which I think you can in this instance in, yeah, for uh, this look, publisher. Um, I mean, the, the like book, for me, this the book is, is a work of complete fiction. But I mean, at the same time. I get what you guys are saying, yes. I, I, and I'm not, and I'm one that's right us into banning, and I'm not even advocating the book be banned. But at the same time, reclassify it. Yeah, as like th- this is a, this is a work. Re-release okay. it. Yeah, this is a work of fucking fiction, and I mean the fact that this guy who published it doesn't even stand behind the work. It doesn't say, well, look, because if he truly believed, hey, look, there's evidence for this the position. There's no evidence to define this position. There's it's nothing- a tricky thing because if you're gonna say that this, if you if you say Sandy Hook never happened, what you're saying is. And you, by the necessity of that statement, you're saying all these parents are liars, 
And so, I mean, if 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 that if it can be demonstrated that you lied about that and you knowingly are lying about for that for profit, most times, then you are defaming them, which means that's not a a a, a, a legitimate expression of it's freedom not a, of speech. It's not a criminal thing at this point. It's, but, it's, it's talking about a civil suit. So I mean, it's, right. it's different. But I mean, still, when you when you when you can make someone civilly liable for writing a book that promotes this theory. Um, I don't know. I think it kind of nullifies the ability to say something like that. But at the same time, by the very virtue of even saying that, you're you are defaming people by default. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's like it's really kind of a tricky one for me. I think I I have to side with the courts on it. I mean, it, this this parent, this guy is being defamed. I mean, he his he had a kid. His kid died. You know, he shouldn't have to deal with this bullshit. He shouldn't have to deal with people calling him and. Uh, death threatening him, and uh, you know all these parents have their tragedies fucking basically shoved in their face by some reprehensible fuckwit. But wow, I mean, uh, it, it's just tough because I really, I really like to be a free speech absolutist whenever possible. But um, I guess in this instance, you really can't. Right. Well, I've always struggled. Anyway. I've always struggled with that title. I get labeled sometimes a free speech absolutist, and I'll sometimes label myself that way. But for me. The this is kind of indicative of a modern day like practical example of the fire in a crowded theater principle right. for me. It's not that Sandy Hook never happened was said, which is why I think the book being pulled is you know a measure that doesn't make much sense. It's the constant kind of egging of the audience into like oh let's find these people oh they're, they're hiding out yeah. and then, you know what I mean. It, that that to me clearly cl- crossed the barrier of inciting the the audience to intervene in these people's lives and dig through their trash and shit. I mean, which, this guy, all of which happened, by the way. Yeah, the guy featured there received a death threat. There's a woman in Florida who was actually sentenced. It was like you can't even go to these sites anymore because she was contacting him and saying that she was going to kill him. So yeah, like I said, this for me, this is not a this is an example of somebody's speech crossing that that barrier that fire in a crowded theater barrier where it literally was obviously and nakedly endangering the livelihood and lives of the people that it was targeting and inciting people to do things maybe not direct violence but certainly intervene and follow and, and harass these and stalk. harass and stop I mean, some of these parents have had to move multiple times right. because people find their addresses and they're just inundated. that's too much i mean that's, that's, that's come on you have to take a stand there and and at that point, can you call yourself a free speech absolutist anymore if you take a stand there? I don't think you can. I mean, yeah, an so I don't know where I stand on free speech. I'm a free speech radical. You know, I I think that pretty much anything that you say that isn't a direct incitement of violence against another person should be totally fucking permissible. Yeah, and even that should be carefully fucking examined to make sure that it's an actual incitement. And not just a proclamation or a declaration I don't think that's or a the, statement of opinion. Super tricky. I don't issue, think that's, but, a, that's like the sublime position to be a free speech absolutist. I think you should have very strong protections and obviously, at almost any turn, I think fall on the side of I just of worry speech. about, uh, and once again, we could get into a slippery slope kind of thing, but I, I do worry about, okay, so these people, uh, are, these people can't talk about this conspiracy because it defames these people. Right. So then... No, I don't think it's. I don't think that's even being said. I think that the problem with well, that is... I, that I think that... I mean, like, how do you say... I mean, like, how do you possibly go about saying, I think Sandy Hook was staged, or mm-hmm. I think any school just should presenting be staged... Your, just basically presenting without, evidence. But without saying the parents are liars, and without saying their kids either never existed or weren't By not killed, raptly or, covering where those people live, where they're, right. what their movements are, hiring private investigators to dig through their trash and encouraging your audience to do the same... Yeah, yeah, call the hotline some, if you see them and blah, 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 Having blah, blah. some journalistic... Or, all that shit. Or some integrity with the way you report these. Well, anyone, with journal, no, anyone with journalistic integrity is never going to write that book to begin with. Well, I'm saying kind of following guidelines like that. Like, if you want to interview the people, ask them if they yeah. want to be interviewed. If they don't, then well, you don't anyway, interview but, them. But, you don't what ask I, them. Anyway, what I was getting at was I'm, I'm concerned that it gets to a point where things that are true, but maybe someone else could label a conspiracy, or mm-hmm. at least something that's valid... Like a valid a bit of speculation being labeled conspiracy so that it could be censored, which I think the more and more conspiracy theory. So you're talking about is, like the inverse. Right. Like there's some evidence that you come across of some big business figure uh, doing horrible or like, things. Even if I just take a mainstream. About pl- like, look, a, a lot of these, uh, there's been some free speech issues about uh, what, you, what you can and can't say about Israel or, or if Israel boycotts. People who boycott Israel should be employed by the government and stuff. Right. Uh, which is totally ridiculous even to fuck. But, like, what if they say, what if I say, look, you know, um, 
Israel uh, has, has killed all these people, and Israel has, uh, you know, has an apartheid state, and Israel is one of the worst human rights violators on the face of the earth. What if someone says, well, that's all conspiracy theory, and you're a conspiracy theorist, and Israel's really this great place, and it's wonderful, and we're in power. You're so. simplifying too much. You would have to, now, let's say that you then went and engaged in a pattern of you should go find your local Jews and right. dig through their trash and find out what they're up to and follow them and stuff. Then you've crossed the line. Right, okay. So you've oversimplified. See, this is a very specific example of targeted harassment. Right. And encouragement of an audience and people that are not uh, qualified to investigate anybody or any crime to investigate a non-existent crime that is very clearly provable as having well, happened. Also, saying the parents are liars is a very general thing. Saying this guy in particular, right. look at him. He's a liar. Here's he's a well, picture look, of him. Here's his address. Look, I, I think you guys are misunderstanding the nature of the, the civil ruling. Because uh, let, me, let me put this up. This will fucking kind of. So here's what Posner has said. If Mr. Fetzner wants to believe that Sandy Hook never happened and that we were all crisis actors, even though my son never existed, he has the right to be wrong, but he doesn't have the right to broadcast those beliefs if they defame me or harass right. me. Right. I don't think this contrad contradicts what I well, was saying. Well, but he's saying that the very nature of him even saying publicly that Sandy Hook never no. happened by its by nature defend, defames no. him. No. I don't take it that way. Let me let's read it again. If Mr. if Mr. Fetzer wants to believe that Sandy Hook never happened and that we were all crisis actors, even though my son never existed, he has a right to be wrong. Right. But he doesn't have the right to broadcast those beliefs if they defame or harass me. Right. Yeah. So. If they defame me, though. And I think that you can't possibly broadcast the belief that Sandy Hook didn't well, happen there's, yeah, how without, do you, but without defaming him by necessity. But there's a very well, high legal standard for defamation, and you know right. that. It's that's not, why it's not the, just simply saying, this guy's a liar. That's, that's not, why the inclusion of the or harass is important. Right. But that's not an and. That's not an but and. But you can't separate the two that's in this case. You can't separate the case in this two. And this is a quote from, uh, you know, one of the fucking people. He's not a professional fucking speaker. Right. I think you're reading too much into it, and maybe I'm reading a, a different way. Well, I think we'd have the, to actually look at the case because file in the, probably understand. But that. in this case, you can't separate the two. The defamation caused the harassment. Right. And the harassment was part of the defamation. But the point I'm making is that how how would you even go about saying that Sandy Hook never happened without, by necessity, defaming this guy. You know what I mean? Right. He Just mention him in a general sense. Mention all the... Say, I right. don't believe the parents' version the of The parents events. are liars. The children never existed. But I think this, guy, I think said, this guy is still going to say that that's defamation at that point. I don't think... I, well, not, I don't think... It, I don't, I don't think... It, I think if it was done a different way, I don't think it rise to the legal definition of defamation. He I, lost, and, and, and here's the thing. If he didn't meet that standard and he filed this case, which he has a right to do... He would have lost the case then. Right. Well, I would be hesitant to put any kind of words in his mouth because right. I haven't heard anything sure, other than sure. this. But, sure, fair enough. Um, but, you know, I have to assume that, that the his inclusion of that uh, very, I think, uh, open First Amendment friendly opening to that statement, which is he has a right to believe these things. Right. That obviously implies that he has the right to speak about them. And the term broadcast and harass, I think, are the ones that you need to mm. focus on. He's talking about broadcasting it to a wide audience of people who are encouraged to harass a person. He doesn't right. have the right to do that, and I agree with him.